Oh my god, Becky, look at her bandana. She is so <sighs> cute. Thank you so much. I mean, I thought it's how to survive a government conspiracy night. So why not wear my anti-government conspiracy hat? Oh my gosh. This is why you're in charge, because I forgot to do all of that. And that's why you are the one that's going to survive this and help us all through this situation? Situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, how else are you going to keep like the gamma, radio, delta, alpha alien waves out of your brain and keep you from being indoctrinated with uh, propaganda that's clearly going to lead you to engage in uh, illicit uh, behaviors. I was just going to get rid of my brain entirely. That way there's nothing to take over. But I am kind of wondering, how would you recommend possibly surviving this whole notion that the government has implanted bugs into your skin to keep control of you and to listen in on you while you are stuck in a motel with one of the Judds. I want you to know that I think about that question basically on the daily and I bring it to confession every week because I really feel like only the Lord has the answer to that. Well, I'm said. ruminating over that. Well, what the Lord says is, one, um, can I sing the entire Judd discography in perfect pitch? No, ma'am, I cannot. But is she going to try? Yes, ma'am, she will. And so <laughs> I feel like if I sing it loud enough, like uh, a cat in heat that is choking on an entire lit box of marble reds, Ooh. then the government will eventually go, this is cruel and unusual to us. And anything that is cruel and unusual to the government, therefore, must be eliminated. I love that very much. This is it. That has been the episode. Mm -hmm. That was How to Survive a Government Conspiracy. Like, subscribe, share, comment, and send Chris pictures of your butt. That's it. We'll see you next week. Thank you. That's that's all I want. It's my birthday next week. So, you know, <laughs> it's just an early present for me. <laughs> Loved you, Derek. Um, Okay, so question for you. Um, have yeah. you ever woken up in a dystopian future where you think everything is normal only to realize that it's not normal? And then you start to ask questions and the people that you ask questions to begin to disappear. And you think that's kind of odd because um, they were there yesterday, but now they're not there so much. And you continue to ask more questions and you realize that the only way to survive the scenario that you're in is to um, find a band of teenagers who will clearly see you through to the other side of whatever apocalyptic nightmare you had habitualized yourself to. Christopher Daniels, indeed I have. And let me tell you, ayahuasca, hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Ayahuasca is a- Oh, cause it, you definitely said ayahuasca. <laughs> Um, that was the Spanish inflection that it deserves to be pronounced with. I'm sure that you couldn't understand as a person who is not as well-traveled and as well indoctrinated in languages as I am, since you only speak 14 Correct. languages and I speak 15. <laughs> but I said it with some Spanish flair, and the people I at home know what that. I said. They do. They do. They're here for it. Um, <laughs> well, if... Any of you who are listening and watching uh, at home answered yes to the aforementioned scenarios, then you might just find yourself in the midst of a government conspiracy. A government conspiracy? You mean <sighs> the government doesn't have my best interest in mind and is actively working against me? Oh my god, yes. You should film a documentary about it. <laughs> no. That's the f easiest and quickest way to like go missing is to actually investigate the government. And I'm not trying to go missing. I, know, I got like, shit really... to do. I have your birthday party to celebrate I mean, but... next week. Oh, that is right. But then we could go missing together and it could be a thing and, and it would just solve so many things. If we went I missing know. at the same time, would we end up missing together at the same place? Like where we would be? Or would they split us up? They would definitely split us up. I feel like the yeah. sheer fabulosity and faggotry of our combined queerness would undoubtedly undermine and bring down the entire U.S. government. 
We would just be stuck sitting in a cell singing the entire Judd discography, and they'd be like, oh my god, let them free if they promise to never, ever, ever, ever do that again. And they would say, nah, y'all can keep us in here. We'll keep going. We still got two more albums. That's right. And eventually we would get super creative and find that uh, inner voice that tells us, you know what would be better than singing the entire Judd discography? Would be to sing the entire Judd discography in the style of ABBA sung by Cher. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. We're too powerful. We're too powerful. And the people at home mm -hmm. are so freaking lucky that they have two powerful beings to help them survive a government conspiracy. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. And so welcome to the Deadweight Survival Guide. This week, <laughs> how to survive a government conspiracy. Where host Joe Daniel Montalongo and myself, Christopher Daniels, will share our top film recommendations inspired by the theme and then top it all off with some irreverent and absolutely horrendous tips and tricks that you should certainly utilize in a post-apocalyptic scenario. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your accent. What was that? <laughs> I definitely did not say post-apocalyptic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that, that's not what I yeah. heard, so I just wanted to make sure. No, it's like apocalyptic <laughs> light. Like, it's a thing, okay? Like, it's a real, it's a real word. It's, it's like training like wheels bongo. apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go first with your movie recommendation, or do you want me to? Um, I would love to go first and second and last, Great. but for this, I'll go first and then you can go. Um, Thank you so much. So my first pick is a movie that I saw on accident. It wasn't what I thought it was, but it turned out to be something a lot better than I expected it to be. And that's 2006's Bug. Now, Bug is directed by William Friedkin, the same guy who directed The Exorcist. And just like The Exorcist, this movie gets under your skin. Now, um, Ashley Judd runs a motel that Michael Shannon stays in, one of Michael Shannon's first roles where I recognized him as Michael Shannon. And he stays there for a little bit of a time, and then it starts going crazy where he starts getting Ashley Judd into his conspiracy that the government is looking out for him. He has come back from a war, and they're still monitoring him, and they have implemented bugs into his implement, implanted. Wow. There Language is, is hard today, y'all. Language is hard today mm, um mm, <laughs> implanted mm. bugs into his body to monitor him and he is trying to block them out and it turns into this beautiful conspiracy like is it true is it not there's enough evidence that points both ways until like ashley judd is also involved into it and she's like oh my god there's so much power here there is so much that's wrong here and it is very spookity ookity it gets really really deranged and it gets very very tragic for some of the characters involved Okay, okay. Definitely thought the film was going to be more like a slither situation where like the government had orchestrated genetically modified bed bugs to eat and assassinate people. See, that would be too easy because then you would know the government was on it. The best part of a conspiracy is having enough information to be like, if I could prove this, I could take the entire government down. But I have to be able to prove it. And as with anything, I love the chase. And this movie is all about the chase, all about getting you there, all about you being like, Michael Shannon is so weird and so crazy. Like, Ashley Judd needs to stay away from him to the point where you're like, I think he's right. I think he's making points and I think I'm on his side. And then that's the entire journey that Ashley Judd goes through. And whatever journey she's going on, I'm going on with her. Let me tell you that right now. Why? Because she's a Judd. And that's just what you do when a Judd is involved. And that's what you do when a Judd is involved. That's the title of the episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris, what's your first pick? Now mine, uh, I feel like all three of my picks are going to require explanation, which I will not provide because <laughs> I feel like it's very important for uh, our studio audience to extrapolate why I've chosen these films, but my first pick is a science fiction classic. It's actually one of my favorite films of all time. I've seen it 
a lot and I still don't fully understand it, <laughs> even in my scene. Um, and that is the original, and I hope Derek got this right, the original Total Recall. No. 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 Oh. oh how embarrassing oh, to our producer oh, Derek. Derek. Oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so, I still love you, Derek. But it's good. That's a good teaching point because this is the reboot of Total Recall with Colin Farrell. And let me tell you, it sucked donkey balls. It was an <laughs> awful film. And Total Recall stars one of my favorite daddies of all existence, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You can say whatever you want about, don't look at me like that. You can say whatever you want about his politics, his morality, his socialness. But my guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger, especially in the 80s and 90s, can get it. He can still get it. I do not care. And you know what? I do not feel the need to justify myself or explain myself or bow down from this. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was here for it. Now, here's the thing about Total Recall. I don't fully understand it. And it does not make a lot of sense. But you got some guy who was a secret agent and had false memories implanted, but maybe they weren't false. Maybe they were real. And maybe the things he was remembering is not real. And he's on Mars and it's all about terraforming and there are mutants. It is great. And the whole idea in my mind of why I chose this for a government conspiracy is to think about what would happen if memory became a tool, that's assuming it's not already, a tool of governance. So Ooh. things were just removed from people's minds, whether they be atrocities or behaviors or anything like that. Obviously, there's been um, experimentation into um, curtailing certain thoughts and regions of the brain from firing and acting up. But what happens if you just removed somebody's entire life what happens if you removed somebody's entire segment of their memories and planted false memories into it maybe you were disobedient and all of a sudden memories of docility were put into it and i just like you were saying about the chase i love the journey that arnold goes on um realizing that his wife and his life is a fabrication and he's trying to get to the truth and there's this entire group that is against him. And let me tell you, conspiracy theorists believe that the entire <laughs> universe is conspiring against them. Just them, they're special, nobody else. And so I feel like it really plays into that whole conspiracy theory um, mentality idea on Mars. I think this is an excellent choice because it starts getting you to believe those very same things where you're like, okay, what if the entire universe was against me? What if everyone's involved in this plot against me and nothing that I have experienced is real? What's keeping me from the truth? And what truth was there that is so bad or so powerful that these people are preventing me from remembering it or from learning from it? And I think it is, on top of everything, it's also an incredible blast just to get through. Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. goes through so much, punches women in the <laughs> face constantly. There's a three-boobed woman and that's my favorite kind of women. That's not true. And that's very, very offensive to women. And I apologize on behalf of all of us. Um, mm -hmm. But it is so much fun. I think this is an excellent choice. I thought you were going to have to make a bigger stretch for the movies that you were doing. But this one was a pretty good one. Thank you so much. Well, um, top that. Um, as with anything, I'm really good at topping it. And I'm going to top that with an actual good movie. And that is Jacob's Ladder, 1990. Starring um, Tim Robbins? Ribbons. Robbins. I was going to say Ribbons, and I know that's not correct. Um, this movie is very scary to me. And it is about this gentleman who has fought in the war. I think I believe it's the Vietnam War, but I can be corrected. All of those wars blend in together for one of them. The constant battle that we are fighting, which is we are the enemy. And he comes back home after the war and starts experiencing nightmares, visions, and flashbacks to the times where he was fighting in the war. And they are seeping into the moments now. And they are discussing creatures that are lurking about. And then he starts trying to unravel the mystery of what he's going through. And it has to be connected to the fact that he witnessed something that he should not have. And just like yours, there is someone trying to prevent him from learning it. 
from from experiencing what he actually went through and now that's coming back mm. and manifesting in all these disgusting dirty visions it is scary to watch mostly well for the visions and because of how it all ties up and how you understand that the government actually does not have the best interest at minds for the people that it sends off into war it is terrifying it is so good and elizabeth benya is in it and i love anything elizabeth benya is in so there you go um, I love that. And like always, I love the passion of your explanations and everything that you bring to it. And the um, scholarly attitude of actually naming people in your films and actually providing a, a strong plot basis for our viewers at home. I just really want to commend you on your work. I appreciate that so much. I know that a lot of people don't go into that work and like that's also respectable, but I like to do the work that other people won't. Hence me always being on top. See, and I just like showing up, hence why I'm always on the bottom. Now, <laughs> my second film, uh, again, may take a little bit of extrapolation, although you guessed it, okay, Miss Cleo? Like, I... <laughs> You just guessed my film uh, while we were in the green room, which just shows that you know me better than anybody else in this universe. My second film is Zootopia. People now, know Zootopia! Uh, uh, uh. Now, all I need to say is Shakira, Shakira. That should be enough for everyone in terms of seeing this film, loving this film, recognizing its brilliance. But like all disney animated films there's a lot of adult themes and there's a lot of adult lessons that are masked in this world of um children's stories and so the reason why i chose this is because the idea of propaganda being used against your neighbors you know erratic behavior or behavior that's kind of out of the norm and then uh individuals in society come out and they make broad babies broad-based claims about who they are and they're a danger to society and all of a sudden these individuals need to be vilified and they need to be gone after and so i was reading a wikipedia page because you know she does her research and they use this phrase prey supremacist society and i thought that was a really intriguing um phrase that um you know, predators and preys are a natural part of this cycle. And yet there was a government conspiracy. Uh, elected officials were behind it in not only using science and using technology to purposefully alter these animals' behaviors, but then saying, oh, well, there you go. Like, they're predators. What would you expect from predators? And it seems like it plays so much into what's happening right now. It seems like with all the white supremacy that's happening right now and the resurgency of it, it seems like this is such a brilliant movie to come out at this time. That how insidious and how... Uh, how powerful um, it can be in swaying a society when elected officials who are corrupt, who are um, morally bankrupt, who have no sense of what's right and wrong, begin to make broad-based statements and stereotypes about groups, about individuals, and how easy it is for society to then turn and be like, "Yep, you're absolutely right," and I and you know, without really taking that moment to consider and think about the implications and really what's going on so i think this film is brilliant and i think it has I a lot of strong messages you. in it yeah i it's so interesting because this movie is so brilliant as with anything that's too brilliant its intended audience may not get the point right away um i remember watching this movie and then being like oh my god the this movie had so much courage to say what it had to say and take the stance that it takes, which is absolutely incredible. And then there's some people who are like, what do you mean? And I was like, this is, this, this is about white supremacy. And this is about how, like, we actually target minority groups, specifically, like, black people. And how this whole system is set up against them and how that's actually a real thing. And then a lot of people are like, no, you're reading too much into it. 
It's about predators versus prey. And I was like, Get your <laughs> so is the real world. <laughs> it's what you made it. So I think it's an incredible pick. And if if you want to talk about government conspiracies, a government that is against the people has it written to its laws that is against a certain type of people and has the infrastructure so wound in its own DNA that it prevents any change from going into it unless it's an entire dismantling and then rebooting. That's the most terrifying thing you can do. I have all horror picks, and I think Zootopia is the scariest one because it shows, yes, the government is against it, the government is in control, and it's got an agenda, and its agenda is to have it in favor of a particular group of people and against a lot of a group of people. And as with anything, she cares mm-hmm. here to save the day. That's it. That's it. And you do not need to look any further than the Super Bowl halftime show. Like, if you want to talk about people turning, all you need to do is look at the Super Bowl halftime show. That's all I'm saying. But I think, you know, a sort of important thing when we're talking about government conspiracy, and there's a lot of conspiracy theories um, out there, is who's being left out from the conversation when we talk about conspiracy theories? Because I think conspiracy theorists come from a very privileged place in their way of examining our world and our society. And they there's a self-righteousness that comes into play where they think they're pointing something out and at the same time ignoring so many other systemic inequality and so much systemic um, problems and how the government is stacked against certain groups and individuals. And then all of a sudden there's this conspiracy theory that comes out and you're like, yes, oh, the government is not for everyone. You're like, well, no, Sherlock. You just tuning in? Wow, your cable broken? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I've never heard that all together. <laughs> I love having you in my life because there's so many things that you enlighten me to, so many things that you bring to the forefront of our conversations that demand that we have that conversation. And I love that so much about you. Thank you so much, Christopher Daniels, for that. I love you so much. What's your third pick? My third pick is another horror movie. <laughs> um, from John Carp, I'm telling, okay, so government conspiracies are not my judge because I'm constantly terrified of the government. I don't think the government cares about its people. I think that it is all a sham. And I think we need to set everything on fire and start all over. But that's just me. Um, So I like to watch my government conspiracy through a lens of terror where I'm like, oh my gosh, isn't this a fun, scary movie that then I can distance myself out of? Um, And that's why I picked, what year was this? 1988's They Live. This is directed by John Carpenter, who is a master of horror. Mm -hmm. And it stars Roddy Piper for some reason. And it is really, really great. And... It is about how an alien race has infiltrated our world and has disguised themselves as our group of elites. So whether it's in the media, whether it's in the government, it is the people who sit high above and tell us all how we should live, what we need to do. They're in control of us, but we can't see it because we just believe the higher ups and we take their word for power. And then Roddy Piper gets these pair of glasses that he can put on and the entire world is black and white, except the fact that he can see the true form of these people who are taking coverage as our elite and you can see the propaganda and the hidden messages that they have. So a lot of it is involved with the government. It is telling you who to believe, what to believe, but it's also tied in with capitalism, which I think you cannot separate from specifically the United States government. And they are telling you what to purchase, where to go, what brands to select, where you need to be, what is the hippest style. And that's how they control all of us. And that's how they keep us lined up. And that's how they keep their power over us. And I think it is so cool. Roddy Piper kicks so much ass. And it's just like a really great movie to watch to then have to like look out into the world and be like, okay, what is real? And what is targeted at me to do something specific? Or it's like, it's propaganda because in essence all marketing is propaganda anytime you see a commercial that's propaganda to get you to buy or invest in a certain product or whatever and it's so interesting to then like have to be paying attention to what is an authentic experience and what is someone telling you what you need to do to like put money in their pockets and it is so scary Mm -hmm. and so fun and i absolutely love it i love and i love your um 
the harmony for you of It Is So Scary and I Love It. I absolutely love being terrified. It's one of my top three favorite hobbies. See, I enjoy being terrified, but not really. I'm a very complex individual. It's what it means to be a Gemini. Like, I want Good. to be scared, and yet I don't. What part about you doesn't want to be scared? And what part about you does want to be scared? Um, I love the adrenaline rush, and I'm always down to try new things. Um, but like, okay, so when we did the in the dark uh, haunted house thing, like I wanted to do yes. it, and I was there for it the entire time. I was genuinely freaked out and wanted to solve the mystery and get the f out of Dodge. You could have stayed there all day and like had a lovely time talking to the demons and the ghosts that were haunting the establishment. I wanted to get through those doors. <laughs> Audience at home, let me tell you. Uh, so it's the underground maze underneath the Reno Axe. I'm so sorry, I forget the name, but it's all combined together. It is an incredible experience and it is all mm -hmm. done in the dark. You have to feel your way along this maze and then you get to certain parts that are poorly lit. You have to solve the clue in order to advance to the next part. And me being a person who loves being terrified, I'm like, oh my God gosh this is so spooky i could die at any moment there could be people walking around in here i would never know i'm trying to make the scenario scarier for myself um chris is yanking my arm running me through and i chris is brilliant and intelligent and i have never seen that as in much respect as chris is like okay here's the riddle here's the thing here's how we get out okay here's the code i have done the whole the formula uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared plus or minus the squared dividend of whatever chris got us out of there in record time it takes mm -hmm. an hour we were out of there in 30 minutes and even the person was like how did you guys do that so fast i was like i don't know but we made it and i was so excited just to be scared and chris was going so far and he was like okay we did it we never have to do this again that was so much fun I'm stressed out. And I was like, ooh, girl, I could have spent so much more time. That was so much fun. I know this, like, over here <laughs> is like, I'm going to come back tomorrow and do acid and do it. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. Demon's going to get you. See, I may not survive many apocalyptic scenarios, but a haunted house, now, that's some shit I could survive. See, and I'd be the girl that's just like, Ghost, what do you want? How can I help you? Mm -mm. Let's move on to the next mm -mm. thing, Chris. Like, mm -mm. get us out. I refer you to Jesus and get the F out. <laughs> That's what... So sorry. Chris, I'm booked for today. You gonna have to talk... Talk to the Holy <laughs> Spirit. Now, for my third pick, um, it's probably my most obvious one, but it seems like if I didn't choose this one... Um, it'd be like steel magnolias all over again, again, of how to survive a wedding. And that is V for Vendetta. Oh, now, it's just not the right I think, okay. uh huh. Now, V for Vendetta, I think, is one of the most beautiful, visually stunning, emotional movies that I have seen in a really long time. Who I feel like this was Natalie Portman at her finest. I feel like she really became um known in people's registrar about and as an actress i feel like this was her breakout moment that sentence made no sense by the way like i don't know what a registrar is outside of a university setting um but the scenes of policing and um monitoring people's behavior and spying on them and going into people's homes in the middle of the night and arresting them on decency laws and how certain materials were banned. And it, it was so close to what is a current reality in many respects. And it was really the precursor, I feel like, to A Handmaid's Tale. And this idea of eventually the government is going to swing so far to the right into conservative Judeo-Christian ideology that eventually we're going to be almost in a police state of this is how you behave, this is how um, you are 
monitoring yourself. And I love the idea of a vigilante. I am, I am hot for any vigilante, especially in a cape, <laughs> especially in a mask. Um, and yeah, I just absolutely love this film. And the reason why I chose it for, it's less of a government conspiracy. It's very obvious the government is uh, jacked and against you. Um, but what I love is this film came out in a time where people felt really powerless and they really didn't know what to do. And the idea of taking action and rising up and in engaging in this way, granted, super violent and not recommended and not, but just the simple act of social change. And I think what's happening right now with the pandemic and what people are doing is if I share a Facebook post, if I post something to my Instagram feed, if I tweet something, that is enough social action. That is enough. Um, that is enough. And whenever I see this film, I'm always reminded um that radicalness is what's needed and nonviolent radicalness. And it's not great. You shared a video on you or on Facebook. Congratulations. You have done nothing or great. You have posted some thought to your Instagram story. That's going to disappear in the next 24 hours, never to be seen again. Great. You have done nothing. Um, but that has become the new something. So I always like to watch this film to be reminded of what's at stake and what we need to do about it. Um, I love so much everything that you are and how you feel about the world. Um, I absolutely agree with you. I think we need a radical change. As I said, when I said we should burn down the entire government, start all over and build a new infrastructure. Um, and this movie is so heavy because it requires so much from each of the participants in its own story to accomplish what they want to. And it goes to show you that the bad guys are doing all that heavy work because they're like, we're going to do it. It doesn't matter the cost. We are going to be the ones that are in power. We're going to be the ones that control everything. And the good guys have to go through an entire kind of rebirth in order to bring down the bad guys. And I think that that is very, very incredible because part of radicalization is a rebirth. It is destroying what has been conditioned into you, what has been programmed into you in order to think for yourself and in order to make the necessary changes in other people. Part of that is education. I feel like there is a certain point where like you can share your opinions or thoughts about something, but it needs to be backed up by action. If it's just a retweet, if it's just a share video tube thing, it, it's kind of hollow and it you want the points you want people to think that you're doing something when you're really not and i think you need to be out there jane fonda right now is getting arrested every single friday because she is trying to prove a point about climate change and that is a person who is using their power to tell you i know that you're going to listen i know that you're going to be watching out for this i've turned it into a stunt and i can afford to get my bail out of jail so whereas other people can go get um can go to jail and probably get stuck there forever and probably die there. She's like, I can use this power to keep showing this, keep showing you what's wrong with it and keep doing really great things with it. And I think it's super powerful on top of a bunch of other people. She's just the one that like pops into mind where she's also backing it up and she's a household name. So I love everything that you just said, and it's a perfect segue into, so we're in the midst of a government conspiracy right now. Like this is on the job training because we are in the middle of a government conspiracy right now. Because let me tell you, there are so many people who are sharing that damn pandemic video. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I think the folks at home could really benefit from how to survive a government conspiracy, both from the side of how do I survive the government conspiring against me to mess up my life, and how do I survive my friends becoming government conspiracists and trying to ruin my damn day? So what I would recommend, one, get better friends. <laughs> get better friends. If you have the type of friends that are not actively doing really, really great work and have only joined into this because the conspiracy is like a fun activity to do while you're in quarantine, you need to find you some new friends. 
And what you can do is follow really good people who are out there, activists, people who are radical, who are making the changes, who are letting you know what you need to do and follow them and then kind of follow in the footsteps and defend them. Like they're, they're the people who you should be sharing your stuff to, to your wall so that other people can get education and back it up by saying, I am implementing this in this way. I, these are the changes that I am making, and this is what I'm asking of everyone that I hold near and dear to me, is to follow these things as well. It's, oh my god, this has been mm-hmm. such a frustrating time, because I think a lot of people are making dumb decisions. I don't care what side of the political line you are on. Either way, it always comes back to the same point, which is that you don't care about people, you care about yourself. And it is absolutely frustrating to have to witness it in real time. If you can't do anything too radical, especially given the fact that it's not something that we can go, like, gather and protest for, it's a virus. There's a virus going out right now. We are not being protected. We are not taken care of. What you can do is put your money where your mouth is, donate to the groups that need it, help buy medical supplies, help your neighbors out if they can't afford to do something. If you see someone struggling, go help them out. Share some love in the world. Let people know that you are there for them in the capacity that you need them to. You are available to hold that space for them. And then also let people know when they're wrong. I am a big fan of letting people know when they are wrong. As a tourist, as Mexican, and as a queer person, I will be the first person to let you know. And it is, you just have to. You just have to. Because people are spreading too much false information, and it is actually hurting people and killing people. So we need to put a stop to that. I feel like that is really solid and really powerful advice, but it misses the mark a little bit because you left out one truly essential step uh, in all of that. And that is to start a podcast Um, and secondary, a a, a blog. If a podcast is unnecessary, if, if that's not possible, then a blog, because I think how you survive a government conspiracy is that you uh call into the beyond and channel maury povich and think what would maury povich do and maury povich would break the story and so your job of how to survive a government conspiracy is to break the story because whoever breaks the story gets spared from the government because you'll have taken it down so the best way is to clearly um set a podcast get your message out there because people need to hear from you I mean, it's absolutely crucial that people hear your uh, unsolicited and uh, unsubstantiated thoughts and feelings about um, scientific evidence. And in fact, I feel like that's really, really important. Um, Also, how to survive a government conspiracy is to tell everyone that you come across in your immediate world about the government conspiracy because you have just taken it from the microcosm to the macrocosm if you tell more and more people well now um the government has to eliminate and make tons of people disappear and that is a lot of paperwork and the u.s government does not like doing paperwork so if you really thank you Sign, seal, deliver. I'm yours. Thank you. Um, And so really just make it difficult for the U.S. government. So be both visible and out there via your podcast, um, but also blend into the crowd by um, bringing everyone that you come across into the fold. Um. To one up that, as you know, I love to do, I recommend you become a doctor. You're at home. You're not doing anything. Get your doctor right now. And just like our saviors, Dr. Phil and Dr. Atkins, you now have a platform that is built for you. Instead of having to be the person who is like, oh, I started a podcast, be like, um, I was invited onto a podcast because people <sighs> actively wanted me to provide my opinion to you. I didn't just feel like my opinion was important to give. Other people did, and other people asked that of me. So just attach doctor to your name. No one's ever going to look to see if they you can back it up or not. Dr. Christopher mm-hmm. Daniels. Dr. Daniel. Dr. Monty. Oh my. And we're here to help Done. you. I was, I was just um, indoctrinated right now. I hold that power. As a fellow doctor, I was able to knight you as a doctor. 
Right. Thank you so much. I feel that. And like, there's just knowledge pouring into me, um, which just gave me the answer to the next step, not to two up you, but um, I mentioned this earlier. Now that you um, have both your own podcast and been on, invited on several podcasts um, and thus spreading the message and getting your doctorate, um, it's really time to find that band of teenagers that is going to be your um, anti-disestablishment tyrannism troop. So, um, cause all adults are part of the conspiracy. Even ones that are talking about the conspiracy are, are a part of the conspiracy themselves. Um, it's really sad when they are unconscious to their participatory behaviors within the greater conspiracy. Um, the only people who are unaffected by government conspiracies are teenagers and they will rise up and they uh, will dismantle the powers of be. How would you recommend that one obtain a gaggle of teenagers? Um, in a non creepy way. Um, I'm a theater person. I would hold auditions. Um, I would make individuals do monologues from Soylent Green um, and some of my other favorite government conspiracies and the ones that really um, seemed as though they don't want to be there and don't care. Those are my people. And what if you wanted to find like straight teenagers to like join your group just to like <laughs> diversify? What would you recommend then? Um... I feel like uh, there's always the wayward, lingering football, basketball star that secretly dreams of doing a monologue from Soylent Green, um, but feels like they're unable to in the confined pressures of society. So I would just um, probably start singing songs from High School Musical and see which ones finish them. That is incredible. That's what I'm going to be doing from now on. I'm going to be riding around in my truck with my flag hanging out the back, spewing my nonsense and playing high school music. And when people come out of their houses to sing along in some weird form of propaganda and be like, all right, hop in. Let's go. Get in, losers. Those are my people. We're going to go fight this. Those are my people. There we go. And if you want to submit your video audio to join this troop, you can reach us at ghostlighttv.com. So sending your submissions, There's that. see if you want to be part of a group. We're going to get you taken care of real good, real quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, you know, I think once you like have your doctorate and then like you have your group, you're basically the professor X of um, the post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, ruminate on that for a second. Uh, I think the next thing to do to survive the government conspiracy is you need to find your bunker um because they won't find you there um the second you go into a bunker it's like the government has just lost you completely like you are off their radar um and hold up with your guns i mean i think that's really like that's the way to go as an asterisk to that, yes, find your bunker. Yes, hold up with your guns and your teenagers. If for any reason you need to step out, you need to make sure that these people cannot access your thoughts or your brains. And someone doesn't have a lobotomy just like ready and willing like I did. So if you do, remember the number one rule, tinfoil. Tinfoil mm. will keep the people out of your brain. But it is 2020, so you can't just go around looking like a Hershey's Kiss, okay? integrated in something make a cute little cowboy hat make a cute little fedora we all know that <gasps> fedoras love to spout their opinions about the government conspiracies it is time you can even wrap it around your head like how chris has it now that will also help because the main access to the brain is through the forehead little do you know um my cloth headband has a tinfoil lining little do you know that these blonde fringes that I have right here were actually mixed in with tin foil, so there's just speckles all over here. So they try to get in here, I block them, not until I block them, I go like this, and now I'm inside their head because I've sent it back there. Now I am in control. Oh my god, you really are Professor X. Like I'm so in awe of you. Like, but that Excuse means me. I'm Jean Grey. 
I mean, that's fair, but I'm also Jean Grey, also the Phoenix and Guardian of the Emkron Crystal, so you're welcome. The only crystal I believe in is a crystal meth. And that's my platform. People are going to think that I do drugs. Maybe I should take that back a little bit. The only crystal I believe in is Crystal Method, season 12. That's Drag right. Race. Let's get her top four. That's right. That's right. I know. She's going to go all the way. She's going to go all the way. I mean, she's gay. Like, of course, she's going to go all the way. They never heard no stopping at second base or third base. That is correct. Any last uh, ideas or thoughts for uh, what someone should do in a government conspiracy scenario? To anybody that's not your. You are, after all, the one who knows all the information. So anytime someone tries to present you with alternative facts with different opinions, different perspectives, you block out the haters. You, John Cena, can't see them. No, ma'am. Hmm. I love that. Really stay committed to your path and do and really embody resilience as you uh, step forward. I think that's so good. Um, also have really comfortable shoes as well. Also she'll probably be running a lot. Uh, correct. Because um, the mole people will be sending um, information up through the ground. You got to make sure... That you're protected from all angles. Just walk around mm. in tinfoil. That's, just, you know what? Just be the Tin Man. It is Halloween 365 and you are the Tin Man for the rest of your life. That is how you survive. We are in quarantine. Days aren't real anymore. It could be Halloween every single day. And you know what? You can take the opportunity to dress up every single day. Thank you. Good night. Mm. That's all <laughs> the time that we have uh and probably if you are a conspiracy theorist you thought this was just part of a governmental ruse to indoctrinate you to a certain way of thinking and you would be correct so join <laughs> us next week as we uh talk about how to survive a diy project i became a doctor that's how i survived but if you want to know more make sure you tune in next week you know the time, you know the date, you know the YouTube channel. Mm. <laughs> I watch Craft Wars. That's how I did it. <laughs> I actively shrunk my own children. <laughs> you had children? I had six. Ooh. But I only one of them to three of them. That's fair. Is one of them mine? Uh... I'm pretty sure that all of them are yours, but I can't be for certain. They're all really mean to me, so I'm assuming that they are. That is also fair. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for being so punk rock all the time. I love you so much. Thank you to Derek, who without the show, or without his work, the show could not be possible. And thanks to the audience at home, who said, you know what, I had to do terrible advice. Mm -hmm. We love you so much. God bless you. Have a great week. We will see you next week. Good night. Good night.